There are times when we're uh, clamping work directly onto the milling machine table and here's some of the different clamps you may buy or you may uh, use where you work. This uh, particular one, the yellow one, is called a Morton uh, right height and uh, you just uh, it will allow you to clamp different thicknesses of work. You might need to have longer bolts, T-bolts, but uh, when you use these make sure that your uh, T-bolt is always perfectly vertical because this uh, little piece here rocks like that and you want it uh, you want your bolt to be vertical. Now you may need two of these uh, on bigger work or depending on the operation if you want to really hold it down you might want uh, one on either side. And they make these in different size. Here's a Wilton that's slightly smaller that probably would reach that high as well. There is a range of height heights for which these uh, are designed so you need to use the correct ones if you need to go up higher you still can go higher by using longer bolts and then also use some waste stock or a parallel or something underneath here to raise the whole thing up. Here's a much smaller one but for some reason I've only got one of those. My brother I think gave that to me. I use uh, 5 8 bolts on uh, the bridge port but you can get by with half inches as well. Now these uh, U-clamps are probably one of the most uh, common ways of holding work and uh, they come in different sizes and, and different lengths. I got a short one around here someplace. Now what did I do with it? We also have clamps of this type and this type made in different sizes. There's a large and a small and, and yet another one. There's probably almost an endless uh, variety of these that are, that are manufactured. But when you use these, let, uh, let this represent the work that we're holding down. Uh, you need of course a T-bolt and then you need some kind of packing on this end that is approximately the same height as the work. Now be sure and place the bolt closer to the work than you do this packing. Otherwise you got more pressure on this than what you do the work. So you want this to be close to the work. And be sure and use a heavy washer in there. A thick washer, not just a common wrought washer like you might use on a tractor. And we'll put that on like that. Or the other end could go on there too, it doesn't matter. And then we're on the packing over here the same height and then we can tighten this down. And be sure and position this clamp here so it doesn't interfere with the drilling or the milling or whatever the operation is, is that you're going to perform. I like uh, this kind of device. I suppose you've seen these. You can adjust these to any height that you want. Real handy. Also, Over the years, I used to make these blocks, screw blocks, in uh, different heights. Here's kind of a short one, and that can be adjusted up and down to give you the, the height that you need on uh, this end. I hope I'm in the camera range on that. And the clamp should be fairly parallel with the table. So that needs to come down just a little bit. Now I have a whole set of these. They're called Sure Grip Step Blocks. I never have used these. I prefer the other methods, uh, methods that I just showed you, but these can be used. I'll take this set out. They come in pairs and then this would be set up to whatever height you need. You can change the height like this. Or like that. And then that would go under that end when you get it to the right height. Not a big fan of those. I also have a set of these ubiquitous uh, clamping tools that 
they cranked out by the millions across the pond and these come with uh, uh, bolts and uh, T-nuts and riser pieces like I just showed you in the wooden box there's the T-nuts instead of T-bolts and uh, you know just about anything you can think of all held in a sturdy plastic container they did use metal for the back though believe it or not now these would be serviceable, serviceable and I believe these are half inch unless they're metric I don't know because I never have used these but they're about half inch in, in size so they're a little bit smaller but I think these are commonly sold or given away with some of the bench top mills and if you don't have some of the other tools that I just showed you why these this will work quite well even got some of the extra long nuts and those are used to hold uh, two, two of these uh, end to end if necessary they're like couplings and uh, alright that's about all I'll say about uh, this other than I think the whole set is about forty dollars so you know it's really priced right just about the time that I thought I was uh, done showing you all these different things I ran into a bunch more and so now I'm just getting my second wind here's several other devices that can be used on the milling machine to hold work and uh, uh, these next few that I'm going to show you all hold uh, 5C collets, so you can use uh, round collets or square collets or uh, hex collets, whatever you got, to, or what, depending on the kind of work you've got. So, uh, and by the way, whenever you install any of this stuff onto your machine, be sure and wipe the table good, always with a rag and then your hand, and same thing with the bottom surface of anything that's going to be mounted, and then uh, th this particular device can be mounted just with standard uh, T-bolts. Matter of fact, these are the same ones that hold the vise on. So I, this is a half inch collet. We got half inch round in there and depending on what the operation is, this allows you to tighten and loosen the, uh, the collet. And uh, you might be drilling or milling or whatever and it, it can uh, be horizontal like this or you can set it up and it can be vertical. I don't even know what this is called but it's pretty handy. Now here's another one that you've seen many times. This is a five uh, uh, a spin index. Also uses five C collets. Got a little bit of a crank on the back side, and there's an index plate here, and then a vernier set up here in degrees. So you can set this for. Uh, uh, let's see, it goes from zero to three sixty. So you can set it every degree and uh, do whatever operation you want so that you can even imagine and it locks by putting that into one of the holes and you, you lock your uh, uh, collet by turning the crank and tightening it. This is an ENCO spin index fixture it's called. Here's yet another uh, fixture that can be bolted and it's got a protractor and a vernier so this would be highly accurate. This looks like it's pretty old. I don't even know where I got this. Don't think I've ever used it. can tighten the collets with this. You would need a spanner wrench but it's also knurled and once you got it Rotate it where you want on the protractor, well then you can lock it. I don't see a manufacturer's name on this, but it's not made over the pond. Yes, I do see a name on it. Oh, that explains why it looked so precision and quality. It's a hardinge. It's a hardinge. That's like saying it's a Cadillac or a Lexus. Here's my little hardinge index head or dividing head. This has a 4 to 1 ratio. I cover this pretty well in one of my other videos on, uh, well I guess I forgot what I showed you on that other one, but I, I did cover this uh, in another video. Uh, I've got the other index plates 
so you can divide a circle into any number of given parts using a dividing head and by cranking this can be used for gear cutting or splines this uh, we got it in the vertical position now but this will move down into the horizontal position I do not have the uh, tail stock for this that's been lost some time ago a man gave this to me so I don't have that so I can't cut gears uh, some people have asked me to cut gears I don't have a horizontal mill either but uh, you can cut gears on a vertical mill but it's, it's not quite as easy a, a task but this is a hardinge dividing head or index head this little set is called a 5C collet block set made in Korea and it includes a square block and a hexagon I don't know what that's doing in there I don't think I've ever had this open the collet goes in right there and it's keyed just like it is on your lathe and that would be used to tighten the work in the collet this would in turn then be held in your milling machine vise and if you you could turn around into a hex or just about anything you can think of if you want to hold uh, you want to uh, index it on six sides this one is just square and does the same thing with a 5C collet yes I do own a rotary table but it's a relatively small one it's only six inch so that really limits on what I can show you on this and I I haven't done any demonstrations on it I'm waiting for some uh, good idea on what to do with it so I can show you but a rotary table of course is just a little circular table and with the crank you can uh, rotate it 360 degrees and you can uh, d there's a uh, dial here and then there's a protractor down here and then you can lock it in any position so uh, when you're laying out anything on a circle or the circular can be done very accurately on uh, this little device uh, and coupled with the uh, uh, Accurite DRO uh, you can do some real amazing work with a rotary table this one uh, is strictly uh, flat like this some of them you can set up on end into the vertical position this is a little import I don't know what name it is but it's uh, from China but it's still kinda nice I'm starting to run out of things to show you a matter of fact I have run out hope you found this to uh, be of some interest to you even though I didn't do any cutting or any actual uh, layout or anything like that I'm just I guess this is a little bit of a shop tour to show you some of the tools that I have that I can use on my Bridgeport mill and and uh, how handy some of these uh, accessories are you can't afford to buy them all at once but you can afford to buy them used uh, get one for your Christmas present or your birthday and they add up real quickly so this is Tubal Kane saying so long for now